Hi everyone, this is Yuan, and today we're gonna make this lovely curved top cell phone bag. It comes with a front exterior pocket, card pockets in the interior, adjustable strap, and optional wristlet strap. The finished measurements are about 5 inch by 8 inch at the tallest point. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to install zipper on curve just like this. So if this is something that you haven't done before, this project will be a great way to learn about it. All right, guys, go get the free template and the cutting instructions at yuansewingstudio.com or you may click the link that I provided in the description box down below. Let's jump straight into the video and happy sewing. First thing first, you wanna print out the template. This is available for free along with the cutting instructions at yuansewingstudio.com. Once you've done that, you wanna cut the template. There is 3 8 of an inch seam allowance already included in this pattern, so you don't have to add any seam allowances. Next, we're gonna cut the template. So here's the fabric that I'm gonna use for the exterior of the bag. So I folded my fabric wrong sides together wide enough for the template to sit on there. Make sure that the fabric is on the straight grain and then I'm gonna place the template on top. Pin the template in place and I like to use these fabric weights as well. And I'm gonna use my fabric scissors to cut this. If you prefer a rotary cutter, feel free to do so. So you wanna cut two pieces for the back exterior, two pieces for the back interior and also two pieces from the fusible woven interfacing to be fused to the wrong side of both exterior panels. Now you want to mark or snip the top center point of each panel. So this is very important and you want to do the same for the interior panels as well. Now let's work on the front pocket. So you want to cut two rectangles, one from the main fabric and one from the lining fabric. Lay them right sides together and then stitch with 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Once you've done that, press the seams open and then turn this to the right side, press it again and top stitch. Mark half an inch from the top center of the pocket. On the wrong side, you want to add a bit of interfacing to stabilize this area and then install the female button on the half an inch point mark according to the manufacturer's instructions. From the top center point of the front exterior panel, you want to measure 2 and 3 8 of an inch and then put a little mark there. And this is where we're going to install the male button snap. You may also do a bit of assessment beforehand. Simply place the pocket panel aligning the bottom and the side edges and then mark at the same spot where the hole of the female magnetic snap is sitting. On the wrong side, you want to add an extra layer of interfacing. And once you've done that, install the male button snap. Now lay the pocket panel with the wrong side facing down and then stitch the sides and the bottom with quarter of an inch seam allowance to hold this in place. And that's it guys, the front exterior panel is done. Next we're gonna work on the installing the D-ring tab. So first you wanna prepare panel 3 or the D-ring tabs holder. Draw a line right on the center of the long side. Simply measure 1 inch and then draw a straight line with your fabric marker. Fold the edges towards the center point and then press. So you should end up with something like this. Now let's set this aside and we're gonna make the D-ring tabs. Cut two pieces of two inch squares and as usual you want to fold and press this in a fourth to make a half an inch wide strip. And once you've done that, stitch along the edges. Now on the right side of the back exterior panel, you want to measure two inches from the top center point and then draw a straight line across. And then you want to measure and mark one inch from the side edges, just like so. Take the D-ring tab, of course, with the D-ring already attached, and then position that about an inch away from the side edges. So use that one inch point mark as your guide. And the bottom edges should be aligned with the two inch horizontal line. Next, you wanna stitch this in place about an eighth of an inch from the bottom edges. Once you've done that, you wanna repeat the same to the opposite side. So position the second D-ring tab an inch away from the side edges using the one inch point mark as the guide. And there you go. Now you want to draw another horizontal line about half an inch away from the first one, just like shown here. Now take panel 3 with the wrong side facing down, aligning the bottom edges with the second horizontal line, just like shown here. Clip to secure this for now, and then stitch all around with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. As usual, I'm using my walking foot here, and as you get to the D-ring tab, you may want to back stitch again to reinforce the stitching.
Next, we're gonna make the strap. So for the crossbody strap, you'll need the length of your strip between 50 and 55 inch. Since I'm using fat quarter here, I needed to join few strips together to get sufficient length. So we're gonna make the strap just like the usual, starting by folding and pressing the strap in a fourth. Of course, make sure you fold the short side edges towards the wrong side, about half an inch to hide the raw edges first. Stitch this all around and then attach the hardware. I'm pretty sure a lot of you already know how to do this, but if you need a tutorial, I will add a separate link to a different video. So go check that out somewhere in the description box down below, and I will also include that in the pattern. For the wristlet strap, you will need to cut your strip about 13 inches long. Again, if you need a tutorial on how to make the wristlet strap, you can check out the separate link. I will have that in the description box and in the pattern as well. Next, we're gonna work on the card pocket. So you wanna prepare panel four and then fuse the wrong side with some lightweight interfacing and center the position, of course. Draw the folding lines on the wrong side, just like shown here. This should be in the pattern as well. As usual, we're gonna start folding from the bottom or the very last line. Let's fold this towards the top and then press. Now open the fold and then we're gonna fold the next line towards the bottom. On the right side here, you should get your first pleat. Now let's press this real good. Fold the next line towards the top and press. So basically you just wanna alternate the folding direction until you get to the last line and you should end up with three pleats which is gonna be the card slots now let's top stitch the pleat lines and once you've done that you wanna stitch the side edges with about a quarter of an inch seam allowance to hold the pleats in place trim off the bottom edges of your card pocket panel so that it will measure six inches tall now take panel five or the side panels so with three eighths of an inch seam allowance Press the seams and then top stitch. Repeat the same to the opposite side. Next, you wanna take panel six or the pocket lining. I'm using RFID blocking fabric here. If you don't have this, you can just use the same fabric as your lining. Now let's lay this on the right side of the pocket panel and then stitch the top and the bottom edges with 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Once you've done that, you wanna press all the seams open Make sure your iron is on low setting. Turn the pocket panel right side out and then press this again. Position the card pocket panel on the right side of the front interior panel, about two and a quarter inch away from the top center point. Secure with some pins or clips and then stitch all around with about an eighth of an inch seam allowance. All right, our exterior and interior panel are done and ready to go. Now let's move on and work on the zipper. For this project, you're gonna need a 10 inch long per sized zipper. So a per size zipper is about one and a quarter inch wide. You may also use a one inch wide zipper. Just reduce the seam allowances by an eighth of an inch or so. First, we wanna find the center point of the zipper. So I simply measure five inches from the start of the zipper and then put a mark right along the edges of the zipper tape. Make sure that the marking is obvious on the wrong side as well. You may also use a pair of scissors and snip the center point. This way you won't miss it. Next, you wanna measure and mark half an inch from the start of the zipper. Also, you wanna measure and mark half an inch from the end of the zipper. And make sure to do the same on the wrong side as well. We're gonna first attach the zipper to the exterior panels. So here I've got the front exterior with the right side facing up. Unzip the zipper all the way down and then lay the zipper right side down, matching the center point of the exterior panel with the center point of the zipper. I like to have the start of the zipper on my left hand side. And then pin right on the center point and then you can pop a couple of extra pins on each side from the center point. Next, you wanna take a pair of scissors and snip along the edges of the zipper tape. Start about a quarter of an inch from the pin and you wanna snip about an eighth of an inch or so, all the way down until about half an inch before the half an inch point mark. We do this so that the zipper tape can follow the curve smoothly. We're gonna baste the zipper with hand stitching. So grab your needle and thread and you wanna do running stitches along the edges of the zipper tape. This may seem a bit too tedious, but it will worth your while because it will make your life much easier when sewing the zipper later. 
So you want to baste stitch this until you get to the half an inch point mark. So you should end up with something like this. Now for the opposite side, we're going to do the exact same way. Baste the zipper all the way down to the half an inch point mark. Once you've done base stitching the zipper, you want to sew starting from the half an inch point mark at the start of the zipper all around and then stop right on the half an inch point mark at the end of the zipper. All right, I've switched my presser foot to a zipper foot. As you can see here, since I've already basted the zipper ahead of time, everything just goes very smoothly. Now, as you are approaching the half an inch point mark, you may need to slide the zipper pull a little bit to be able to get to that point. Now you want to keep the front exterior panel with the right side facing up and then take the interior panel, the one with the card pockets, and lay that right side down. Again, we're going to make sure to match the center point and then pin and then pop a couple of pins on both sides of the center point. And then we're going to base stitch this again with hand stitching. So just like before, you want to do running stitches starting about quarter of an inch away from the pin all the way down to the half an inch point mark of the zipper. All right, here I've already done basting my front interior panel. So now let's go back to the sewing machine and then stitch again from the half an inch point mark. If you need to put another mark there so you won't miss it, go ahead and do that. And again, stop at the half an inch point mark of the zipper. This time we're gonna use 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Again, hand basting really make the sewing much easier. So it's really worth the extra effort. Trim off the seam allowances right along the curve area, about an eighth of an inch away from the seams. Snip the edges along the curve. Do this carefully though, you don't want to cut through the stitches. Now let's turn this right side out. Finger press along the seams, both the interior and the exterior, to make them look nice and neat. Redo the half an inch point mark of your zipper. This time, make sure that it's obvious on your exterior panel. And then let's go back to the sewing machine and then top stitch starting from the half an inch point mark of the zipper and also stop on the half an inch point mark at the opposite side of the zipper. And there you go guys, the front side of the bag is done. Now we're gonna work on the back side of the bag. So take the exterior panel and lay that right side up. Slide the D-rings down so that they won't interfere with the zipper installation. Now take the zipper and lay that right side down. So just like before, you wanna first match the center point of the zipper with the top center point of the exterior panel and then pin and then continue and work the exact same way as we did with the front side of the bag. And you should end up with something like this. Now it's time to assemble the bag. So first you wanna close the zipper just a little bit, about a couple of inches right before it gets to the curve. Separate the exterior panels from the interior panels with the right sides facing each other. So at this point, the zipper should be naturally sitting on the lining side. Now let's clip the exterior side to secure this. And then stitch along the sides and the bottom with 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. When you start sewing, try to get as close as you can to the zipper. If you can't get too close and there's a little gap, don't worry about it, we're gonna deal with it later. And as you get to the opposite side, you also want to try to sew as close as you can to the zipper. I managed to get about half an inch away from the zipper and that's totally fine. Next, you want to switch the position of the zippers. So you just want to pop this out towards the opposite side or towards the exterior side. So you'll be able to flatten up the back interior side, if that makes sense. So this is how it should look like. Now let's secure the interior panels with some clips. And then again, we're gonna stitch the sides and the bottom. This time though, you wanna leave about three to four inches of opening at the bottom to turn the back right side out later. For the interior side, you wanna use half an inch seam allowance, so slight larger than the exterior. This way it will sit snugly inside the back. And again, guys, you wanna try stitching as close as you can to the zipper. Now let's clip all the corners. Of course, be careful not to cut through the stitches. Turn the back inside out through the opening hole. Poke the corners, make them all nice and neat. 
Now you want to make sure that the edges of the zipper on the sides here are sitting inside the raw edges. So they're not sticking out on the exterior or the interior. Fold the raw edges of the opening hole towards the wrong side about half an inch and then stitch along the edges to close the opening. Now you want to put the lining inside. Alright guys, the last step will be to knitten up the edges of the zipper here. So go grab your hand sewing needle and thread. So you simply want to close this small opening here with slip stitches. This way everything will look nice and neat. I am done with this side. Now let's repeat the same to the opposite. And that's pretty much it guys, your bag is done. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, goodbye!